Yeah, yeah. Got, got a little. All right, Friday. Woo! It's some. It's Friday. some feel good. It's some feel good Friday music for sure. I'll I stepped away that. and I was. It was like super loud. I was like walking around just jamming, as well, feeling good. How are we doing, guys? I'm good, man. You? Yeah. Doing it fantastic. Is. It's a phenomenal. Pop it's, a P, lovable, I always... it's a lovable, huggable, fuckable day. That's it what is. it is. That's what it is, man. It absolutely is. It's like it's April a great day. We're all in Florida, so we're just enjoying this fucking sunshine, gorgeous weather. Love it. Mm-hmm. Last yeah. Friday, was I saying how windy it was in Miami? It's like ridiculously windy today in the last few days. Well, you Your know dad what? out there surfing. You have the benefit of being by the ocean, my man. Yeah, well, my mm. dad is a kite surfer, and him and his group of him and his posse of kite surfing middle-aged hispanic men live on miami beach and they they live for kite surfing so i'm sure they've got good kite surfing in the last few days i'm glad you said that word i feel like the word posse hasn't really (laughs) been used as much like but you know what i mean like think about all the unique ways we could use that like property posse you know like with a property posse you know like i feel like that there's uses for the term posse but we don't use it as much in 2022. I'm glad no, you're bringing don't. that back. Let's for bring your dad it back. Bring, bring back posse. I like yeah. it. Yeah. Let's, yeah. let's bring it back. One subject I wanted to hit on today. Yeah. Because I have been getting asked about it. I've been asked about it for my entire career here, but a lot the last couple weeks. And I don't have a great answer except really for Google Spreadsheet, having an admin or VA type role updating it for you. But... This posse of real estate investing wholesalers, or niche rather, <laughs> they don't know how to manage their data. Like it's, it, and I get it. I, I've been in Google, uh, I've been in Excel lately, just calculating different kind of marketing to sales type metrics for investor views. I'm like, man, this is this is a lot. I need to watch a little bit of YouTube videos to see how to do calculations and such. But that's really the best answer I have. And there's even a lot of high volume, successful, high profit operations that do have a master spreadsheet for managing all their data. And by data, I mean prospects. You're pooling lists, you're driving for dollars, compiling your own list of people to do outbound marketing to, mail, text, cold call, RVM. And they're trying to manage of what type of outreaches they've done, who they reach to, where they got it, what type of variables of distress they might have. So really, I've just been telling people that, like Google Spreadsheets, there are some basic, I guess, platforms for list management. But I wanted to start the show with two gentlemen that have some pretty solid insight on that. Yes. Uh, data management. I, I think we should start with why is it hard? Yeah. I'll tell you why it's fucking hard. You know what? I like to think that out of the three <laughs> of us, I'm just going to shoot it fucking straight. Dude, because it's straight. a shit ton of data, man. Like, I don't deal with it anymore. Like, I originally, like, I scaled out of that. But I know, I think we're over 3 million records at this point and damn near probably shooting past that. And for example, I was talking to John the other day and I just told him on a weekly basis, and I got a small call center, okay? I think we got like 12 people, you know, we're always hiring. Two over, I'll just round and say almost 300,000 dials a week. Okay, so think about what I need in terms of data to feed. We call it feeding the beast. Mm-hmm. Now, granted, not everyone picks up, so you can redial them. It doesn't immediately. I mean, there's a lot of caveats and details we're not going to dive into, but that's why it sucks because I need that data. So you can go and buy a list of 10,000, but what is that, that going to do for me? Mm-hmm. Right? You, when you're sending Top out. Bucket. Yeah, we're sending out like 30 some thousand postcards. You're sending out uh, 250, 300,000 dials a week. Not to mention we're dropping like 30, 40,000 RVMs a day. You need the data to feed that. And then once you have it, you got to organize. Kind of, Carlos, you were saying like how many times I've I've touched them or hit them, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And where they're coming from, all the ways of tracking them. There's a lot like... How many sellers exist on different lists? Okay. How many phone numbers did you get for a seller? How many sellers don't have phone numbers that you sent out to get phone numbers, but never got them back? Well, 
can I send them? Who did I skip trace that with? And who else should I try to skip trace it with to do it? Have I postcard mailed them, cold called them, RVM? What did I do to reach out to them that didn't work? And then the holy grail of it all, which is almost damn near impossible to track, is once I reach out to them and I find out that that phone number isn't good, how do I update that so that way I know person A that I thought I had phone numbers for, I actually don't because they're all invalid wrong numbers. And then can I go find new numbers for them? How do you track all that? How do you track all that? Because I don't know a system that lets you do it your way currently. And there's, like you said, there's a lot of basic systems out there. I think we all know who they are, you know, and I think they each do a phenomenal job at what they do, but they're not, I would not call them man data management tools. Right. I agree with that. Yeah. Yeah. Data management's all about like letting it do, you do it your way and, you know, beyond your like, data your way. Yeah. Beyond yeah. like, Hey, let me go and uh, spend, you know, tens of thousands of dollars on a data engineer to design a, you know, a database that can do it for you. I don't think there's a great solution for that out there. No, yet. I have, so I have, <laughs> so just to speak, talking about why it's a problem. I mean, you guys know, I I've recently hired somebody to manage all of our Excel sheets and like mm -hmm. get it all and eat. And this is his specialty and this mm -hmm. is all he does all day is organize and tabulate and calculate what data we have, where, what's duplicated, what's not. And that's another thing I didn't touch on duplicates, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it, so again, so like it becomes a problem, Carlos, like if you don't have as much money and you don't make as much as I do and you're starting out and you don't have 3 million records, well, maybe you don't need it when you only got 5,000 or 10,000. What happens when you hit 100,000 and you have 20 different lists? 30 mm -hmm. different lists, right? You can't go out and hire one person's job to do. You can't afford that at that point. That doesn't, it doesn't make economical sense for a small business. It's a cool ask and a cool job to have and it's a cool thing to say, oh, I got a data scientist, you know, <laughs> but it's pointless. It's not, a, it's not helping you generate that revenue like a salesperson would. So where's yeah. your money better spent, right? Mm -hmm. So instead, what do you do? It's like shotgun approach. You just shoot it out there and hope some shit sticks and you take down what you can. Yeah. Or or you go find some kind of expensive agency and hope that you get a return on your investment for them managing the lists and like giving you, here's what you got a direct mail, here's yeah. your prospects. Like, I mean, there's those out there, but I mean, that right. again, it's like when you get to that I point where- I wouldn't trust where... anybody with my fucking data though. Right. Right. I'm not well, I think, I mean, there's the people, some people don't even try yeah. because it's- such a massive pain point they're just like i'm gonna hire this person out here and they'll they'll say here's the list for your, your direct mail this month and then go mail that and then you got to pay them now a bunch of money oh yeah i know that company that. well like for example like so the, the big ones out there they want you to upload your data their way because of the way they mm -hmm. structure their software so like i tried them all i have I, I i currently use some of them you know what i mean like i, I have my excel sheets i've tried i have what do you call them? The basic essential plans because, but every time my marketing department comes back to me and says, it's not for us, for our size, they either limit your users, right? Like how are mm -hmm. not users, uh, uploads, records. right? So rows, sellers, records, or they don't want you to report husband, wife, right? Separate mailing addresses, or they can only limit how many phone numbers you get. Oh, you can only upload three phone numbers for this mailing address. And that doesn't make sense sometimes. So every time we have nixed it and we have gone back to the Excel thing, yes, it helps, but it doesn't solve the problem. Yeah. So I don't know. I mean, Carlos, how many people are saying it's a problem, man? Like, is it really? People are lost, confused, considering a religious change of sorts. I think it's a big problem because data is just so important for anybody that's doing outbound marketing. It's, it's crucial. It's the you know, the foundation, you can speak to that. And that's what, it's funny that you're saying that you have somebody that's full-time on your team because that's the answer I give to most people. Like, yeah, the higher volume experience, you know, five, 10 years experience in investing or direct seller marketing. Like they, they probably have someone, if it's not full-time, that's doing a lot of the legwork for them in Excel. 
Because so let me be just, clear. That's just giving me a headache. I know. Just thinking about let, it. let me be clear because I think you misunderstood. I have one person who just analyzes the data of what we have and where. I have other people that manage, move, clean, update, scrub the data. That's not the same person. So it's gotcha. not like, oh, you get one guy to do it. That's an, that's an, impo- I love how we can have a whole conversation about how real estate people, <laughs> newbies, hire a VA and expect them to be fucking Batman and Superman and can do things. That they can. <laughs> they're human yeah. people. Swiss army knife of a yeah, VA. They're yeah, they're not a Swiss army knife. Yeah. They can do as much as you, probably not even as much as you, but they're like, hey, listen, I want you to analyze the data, clean the data, figure out what I got. I want you to provide me a cool Excel sheet, and I want to pay you three dollars an hour. Gotcha. Yeah, that was that was a slight misunderstanding. But typically, in general, some they do have that outsourced to yeah. whatever degree, whether it's oh, yeah. one person to come. And it's going to be yeah. multiple people, right? Because you need somebody to get the Excel sheet, the raw data, right? And once you have that raw data, you need to scrub it, clean it, organize it fix the mm-hmm. names, you know what I mean? Then you gotta like make sure you don't have duplicates. Then you gotta send it out for skip tracing and mind you, set it up in the exact way that that's, that whatever skip tracing company you're sending it to wants it. So that's like, you've already done three different Excel movements, three mm-hmm. different worksheets at that point, And you haven't even gotten your fucking numbers back yet. And then okay. once you get them back, you have to send it through another macro, clean it, organize it, set it up. But you know what? I've deemed this to be a problem. I have. And I've marked it. And I said to myself, who do I know? Shameless mm. plug. Who mm. do I know <laughs> that can help me solve this problem? Who, who in my posse can help me solve this problem? <laughs> yeah. And in true entrepreneurial fashion, I found a problem, decided to solve it, and went to an ally. And I said, <laughs> in the posse call and i said john my man here is said, hey bud do you want to tackle this worldwide problem of data uh-huh. management mm-hmm. so, yes john would you like to tell them what we got coming yeah we do it's called rii op center and uh, it's gonna be pretty phenomenal yes, and sir. every problem that we just said will be solved by it um we took the approach of like, how do we create a database that is as flexible as possible so that you can manage the data that your way, uh, it handles duplicates, it handles ad- unlimited phone numbers, unlimited email addresses on the sellers, multiple sellers per subject. Um, it's a big, very complicated data structure that ultimately allows you to be super flexible. Um, and our goal is to make it understandable for the masses so combine our product experience and understanding how our user wants to go into the the application and use it like for example our import wizard instead of just being like hey here's what you can do and just like map all these fields we specifically say are you uploading new data are you uploading skip trace data yeah. are you appending records um and then based off of the the choices you choose in the wizard you get to a mapping that only has the fields that you need and then um all the logic that happens on the back end is related to the questions that you ask when you import um so it's smart and easy to learn and then combine that with papa p's ability to teach here listen uh, dude, i want to say to anybody not into data what you just said may sound like russian language or boring but to anyone who has this problem, what he said was like talking dirty to him. It was like mm-hmm. sexy talk. Mm-hmm. It was like, mm-hmm. oh shit, I can do all that. And that's the thing is the main thing is when it comes out REI Ops Center, it's going to be like a Carlos, it's going to be like an operation center for your data. It's where, because mm-hmm. the data is the key to our business, whether we're going to talk about a recession and how do you market in that type of thing, whether you're going to talk about a boom cycle, whether you're going to talk about marketing to realtors, whether you're going to talk about marketing and buy, finding homes that have equity, landlords, whatever it is, you need to organize your data and you can't be limited. Mm-hmm. You can't be strapped into a certain constraint. So I just want to say, it has Papa P's approval because I have personally found this to be a problem and wanted to solve my own company's problem. Same thing that I think mm-hmm. it makes Investorfuse great, you know, working side by side with you guys on Investorfuse and solving real problems that we have yeah. 
Whereas, like, we don't know. Like, Podio doesn't do shit, man. Like, it's not like I could call Citrix up and be like, hey, guys, listen. <laughs> to a certain amount of records, this thing bugs the fuck out every day. Can you solve this? You know, like, be like, what the fuck? I didn't even know you guys were using this. Get the fuck off our software. You know, mm-hmm. like, they don't even, it's not even meant for real estate. But everyone no. uses Podio, and that's the thing is, like, it's meant for people in this business because it was designed by, by someone. Us. Exactly. Exactly. So Carlos, tell your people. I'll tell them. I'll, t- I'll, I'll tell the people it's it's coming, not to cut you off there. I'll, I'll tell the people that, oh, I only need one VA. I was able to, you know, I, I was able to poach this guy from SpaceX. He's now working for me as a data scientist, $4 an hour. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Took that downgrade for the culture, for the culture and environment. Exactly. The culture. Down, their yeah. culture is just so awesome. And you guys have a bell in your office and do all this stuff. So yeah, they left off SpaceX. <laughs> but no, that's how oh, it's... I love, I love this. Someone needs to make a movie spoof about how we like us real estate people love to steal all this shit and then use it. <laughs> the fucking mm-hmm. culture. People want to work for me for $4 an hour because my fucking culture is great. Mm-hmm. That's why. I got a yeah. bell. Yeah, they got all, people they got love offers. the environment because we ding a bell every day. No, I got the bell too. Trust me, it doesn't keep people. Yeah, so. yeah. No, they, got, they, they got offered. They got offered six dollars an hour somewhere else, but you know they yeah. went with us. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> they went with us because of the culture. Good, good bonus, full bennies, health benefits, everything like that. You know, not included, but we got good culture. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love. I said that to somebody. <laughs> Listen. I think I got good culture, whatever. I feel like I'm fun to work with. We pay well. But I said that to somebody. And like, I didn't, I just wanted to slap them. I did. Cause I was like, yeah, you know, we had, you know, we're having trouble keeping people. Sometimes, you know, like I've had someone steal leads. They went and they closed them, you know, 40K, 80K, blah, 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 blah. And no shit. The person looked at me and he goes, is it your culture? Oh my God. That's hilarious. I just wanted to be like Will Smith, the shit. <laughs> Shut the fuck up, dude. Like, yeah, it, it, culture plays a huge part. And we've all read the studies that most people are looking for a place that they feel welcomed and engaged in, and then they're happy and they will accept lower pay for that. But trust me, dude, if you hire the wrong person for the job and they're eyeing out for their own self-interest, you could have any type of culture you fucking want. And the second they deem that they're better than you because you've hired the wrong person or they deem that this is their opportunity to get money that they would never otherwise get. And I'm not the only person who has this happen to. So the culture line is just a crock of shit that people use. They will take it, go, close the money, then act like, no, man, I'm fucking better. I just closed this fucking 40K deal, 50K deal. I didn't need my old company. (laughs) And then they realize that the money dries up if you don't keep marketing and building a team. And none of that is sexy or fun. And have a data management tool. Yeah, like already to help you with that. Um, so yeah, well, I, I mean, how do you? I mean, okay, have we finished with the data management? Yeah, I mean, how do like, you hire somebody right, that doesn't that feel was my, your shit? My, my segue there. How can you, in the hiring process, figure out that there could be some of those potential red flags? I mean, so I'll tell you what we do here at Investor Fuse. We don't do any testing. Um, we don't do like. Uh, do this project for us. Um, we just have Rachel, who is our oper- operations manager, who has managed people for her entire career. She's just got like this sixth sense. Um, and she's really good at like interviewing, digging in, figuring out and understanding if people are going to be a great fit or not. And so far, her record is stellar. Um, but that doesn't work at scale. Um, and so we certainly are starting to think, okay, when we are going to start hitting this, you know, upward trend and have to start hiring people very rapidly, you know, what are some of the ways that you can catch those red flags, know how good of a fit they're going to be. Um, and there's this lovely terminology called personality tests, which I don't know a whole lot about, but you know, in our coaching group there, which is the SAS Academy, there's a, a SAS product out there that does like, I think some of the best personality tests out there, but it's literally like, uh, I think $10,000 to, to use it or something crazy, crazy expensive. Um, but really cool results. But I know you've been trying this out, Papa P and I know Carlos, you are, Carlos is there. Um, you're pretty good at understanding personality types. So 
Yeah, or uh, Papa P, tell us what you've been trying out, and let's, I don't know, man. let's dig looking, into it. I'm still waiting for my swag package, by the way, guys. Crock of shit that I don't have that yet. <laughs> Send me your um, shoot, shoot me your your address. I'll, I'll hook you up. I need I need that. Okay. Or if you want to say if you want to say that your social and credit card number live on the the show that works really well. <laughs> it it's two 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 essentially drive. Anybody's able. Anybody in this industry can easily go look. I love when like where do you live? I don't want to tell you. Nah, I got your name. I'm gonna go find it out on County Records. Anyway, um, no, That's I found this funny out. because I don't have a solution. I was talking. I've been asking advice from people and anybody listening if they want to post and say what it is that they use or recommend. So. I use the hiring software right now. We currently do our hiring in house. Everyone knows that. But previously I used a big name software that did the disc profile and yeah. that good for hiring salespeople. But I felt like it didn't give enough guidance. Yeah. You see that they're a high D and an I and like, oh, that could be great for this. But I didn't, I didn't like it. It didn't give me enough. Right. So like in the Myers Brig personality test of like what you are and like, that one's cool, but it doesn't really help you for the work environment. Mm -hmm. So someone mm -hmm. leaned me towards the predict predictive index test, the PI test, because it helps with management. And so it's a, it'll tell you about the person, how they react to certain types of management, what's the best way to manage them. And I was dying because <laughs> I told you guys before we started the show, I got mine and I am a maverick. <laughs> Tom Cruise asked. But I read this and I said, holy fuck, thank God I'm an entrepreneur because nobody would fucking hire me. Resists authority and proven by the book methods in favor of their own ideas. Brandon will question and challenge established company policies. And it goes <laughs> on and on about how I will just be a fucking menace. To <laughs> see and I'm sitting here going like, Fuck. <laughs> this is this is not can you show your funny. screen let's see if we can see it that's like it. that's like iceman that's like iceman telling tom cruise or maverick in top gun he's like you know what your problem is you're dangerous, yeah. <laughs> you're dangerous. no one likes five up there tom cruise maverick's like yeah i am dangerous i'm an entrepreneur that's why no one will hire me i started my own business that's essentially pop up pop up piece saying so you can see you can see I mean, some of it is very flattering, very adaptable, solves problems as they occur rather than for advanced planning. That's a give and a take there saying that I don't plan. Um, decisions takes actions, even in the absence of proof confirming their decision, <laughs> I will just move fucking forward and destroy. Assertive sense of urgency and driving to reach personal goals. All but all these things explain why I'm an entrepreneur, though. To be honest, all joking mm -hmm. aside, this explains yeah, yeah. even my ideas so much. I generate ideas, and you know, I mean, that explains it. But then it'll come, so it'll give you a summary about this person, Brandon, mm -hmm. and then it'll even give you management strategies. Um, so I'm, I'm really thinking, I don't know what the cost is. I'll let you know when I figure it out. Like I just, they let you take like your own, what do you call it? Uh, your own test. Like you take yeah, your yeah. own test to see what you think of it. And I'm going to figure out like, is this something that I can implement? Is it cost effective for me to implement? Sometimes these things are not cost effective. They're cool, but they don't make economical yeah. sense or financial sense for your industry. But it tells you like for me, someone would have to manage me with a high level of autonomy and flexibility. They need to give me ample opportunity of expression to uh, my ideas and initiatives. I want variety and change and all that good stuff. So, I mean, Interesting. I thought it was pretty what, cool. That's the best one, one I've seen. That's the predictive index, PI. I see a link. Yeah, I'd be curious to, to take that for myself. That's pretty cool. Predictive. I think we sh you and I should take them across, and we'll come back next week, and we can, we can see where we land. This yeah. predictiveindex.com? Yeah, 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 yeah. Try um, PI. Put this, put this in the comments for all of our watchers right now. Um, yeah. Everyone's going to go in there. Listen, not everyone's going to be a fucking maverick, guys. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm dangerous. Too some of us will be a goose. I haven't seen the second one that came out. It came out, right? Uh, I got I to gotta watch that. Has it come yeah, out? Same. I don't know. I've seen the trailer. It got deleted during trailers. COVID, but I think... And they look, yeah, I don't know if it's they look fucking badass. Yeah, I'm, I'm very behind on the movies. Tom 
Cruise is fucking crazy. Yeah, I'm a Scientologist. <laughs> I am still gonna go see it. Oh yeah, same. Yeah, there's a there's a list of movies slash shows. I guess mostly movies that I watched growing up with my dad, where he's mm-hmm. a big he's a big pause, explain what's going on. Yeah. <laughs> tell you but i know i know top gun almost like line for line if it comes on i love it may 27th awesome. may 27th oh it's coming out it's coming out everybody be ready be, be ready, ready. Taking, taking my kids to see that one gotta introduce them gotta mm-hmm. let them know have they seen the first one uh no i gotta introduce them to that i did i did introduce my son to iron eagle which is Iron Eagle is like from the 80s. It is where a son, his dad is a pilot and he gets lost. He gets basically has to eject and he gets held prisoner out in like the Middle East. And this 17 year old boy or whatever who knows how to fly has to steal a jet from the Air Force and all the resources and set up. And it's a whole gang of kids and one adult who's helping him go save his dad because the government won't do it. And I tell you, I, I used to watch it with my dad all the time, and I introduced my son. He thought it was the coolest fucking thing in the world because of all the jets and shit blowing up. And I was like, you are Oh, my, my gosh. Kid. What and is that one father, called? The Sun Saving Father, Iron Eagle. I haven't even heard of that. Iron I have Eagle. not heard of that from one either. 80s. It's from the 80s. So we have, like, walkie-talkies, and our code name is, like, Iron Eagle. Like, oh Iron my Eagle. That's hilarious. Yeah, the, the undertone of the, the father-son dynamic there is, is oh, yeah. amazing. It was it was a huge hit in the eight. The sequels did not do so good, but the the initial movie did good back in the eighties. So, Maverick requesting requesting permission to buzz the tower. Take yeah. Ghost Rider to Padner's Fool. <laughs> you do yeah, know Top Gun is great. Top Top Gun is great, John. You you I would I would recommend that. I don't know how oh, much I've seen Top Gun. Have... Oh okay okay. I cool. know I'm from British origin, but I have seen Top Gun guys. Okay. Okay cool. Gotcha. <laughs> um, yeah. You know, Circling back, though, talking about data, I was going to say something and I kind of forgot is just in my personal opinion, when we're sitting here talking about like an entrepreneur and hiring and all these problems you come with, a lot of times people talk about like who they partner with. And I don't personally, I've failed at partnership, mostly because I never understood partnership usually. And I know we didn't. Okay. Usually you go into a partnership blind because you're usually working with people and you're like, oh, let's partner up. Oh, there's this. And you almost ask backwards, wind up into a partnership. And you think that the person next to you, because of proximity, right? Proximity yeah. is the person that should be your partner. So you partner with them. And that's what I used to do is be like, oh, this is a cool idea. Oh, this guy, I'm cool with him. Let's partner up on this man. And then you get into it and you realize you guys have different opinions, the way you work your uh, work ethic, your work attitude, your beliefs and things are all wrongs because you're taking a friend or an associate, right? Like a friend and you're turning them into a partner. And yep. I've always made that mistake. And I, and I'm sure I am just like in any relationship, I know I have my faults and I am a difficult person to work with. So I know I played a huge reason why in those relationships didn't work out in partnership. But for this, I had worked side by side with John, right? For our op center, I had, we worked well together on investor fuse when I was giving critiques and stuff back. We generated ideas good. Like there was a good symbiotic relationship of things that I lacked that he had and what he lacked and I had. Mm-hmm. So when I brought this idea, I didn't bring it to him because he was proximity, right? And yeah. John knows I had tried many different things on my own, right? Before I deemed a partner was going to help me succeed better than me trying to do it on my own. Mm-hmm. And so I think there's a huge thing and I give props for like Chris Rude, who's where I learned it from right at that previous mastermind I went to the other month where he said, it's allies over friends. He goes, he goes, let's mm. do business together and then we can become friends. I don't want to have my friend and then try to do business with him because it never ends well. And I never really yeah. understood all my prior mistakes until that. And then when I realized why RAIF Center is so successful in its early infancy stage and why I believe it's going to be a huge success is mostly because of how I structured and asked John to partner with me because he wasn't my friend. No offense, John. Like, you know, <laughs> yeah, John, no, yeah, offense. no personal offense. The same with you, Carlos. It's like, I didn't personally know you, right? Yeah. We weren't like high school buddies or drinking buddies. We're together mm-hmm. because of business. And as a result, I feel like now we're friends, right? Right. And, uh, you know, I'm going to say that, put that out there. Hopefully I'm your friend. <laughs> <laughs> but... And that's the thing for anybody listening 
is I didn't want to make it seem like me and John knew each other and then we became, you know, oh, let's transition into partners. Me and him had worked together. I yeah. liked his style of working. And that is why this partnership is being so successful and why then we decided with Carlos to partner on a little talk show because we all got along with how we worked and all the other stuff we did together. And I mm-hmm. don't think enough people talk about it. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Way of putting it. I mean, there's like years before this. I mean, like, so like I've been trying to think what, like two years, three years ago. I don't even know. I've I helped before. you on a couple of like small podio stuff. And then I was like, you need to come use Investor Fuse. And then we eventually got you there. And so like there has been this like long build up. And you had ex- like showed me, you know, your vision for what a, the database system could be, um, you know, a, a long time in the middle of that. And, you know, you well, were trying to get it done. It became a big names. Yeah. I just, mm-hmm. again, didn't have the way to do it. Yeah. 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 And then yeah, eventually it's like, hey, like we work great together. Like we, we do, like we can bounce ideas off and, you know, it's like bouncing, bouncing, bouncing. And then we end up with something that, you know, fits great in the middle and, and works great from like a tech product side. And then, you know, a natural real estate investor needing a solution. So yeah, no, I'm really excited about it too. And I think it's going to be, uh, because of its foundation and it's, you know, um, the partnership and it's, you know, working to, oh, yeah. It's cycles. You have, it's really good. Let me ask you, both of you. Sorry to interrupt. I was just curious. Do you guys have friends that you would never partner with? Yes. Do yeah, have, for sure. Questions you love them. I have friends I would partner yeah. with. Yeah, like mm-hmm. you love them. Like they're cool people, but you would never go into business with them. Yeah. Mm-mm. Why is that? Well, what are the main reasons why you wouldn't go into business with them? Would Would you say work ethic is one of them? Have you ever seen someone's work ethic? Yeah, work ethic, like I, you know, as a friend, you get a, a, a deeper insight into their life. Like when somebody goes through a nine to five, like they can, you know, put up a, I don't want to say charade, but just like, you know, there are a person at work and they're a person at home. And when you're a friend, mm-hmm. you kind of get to see the full picture. And when you're choosing somebody that you want to work with to carry a goal through, like it, you need more than a, a nine to five charade um and not everybody's like that and i'm i'm sure some people out there have friends that are like man you do have a great work ethic and they're able to yeah. you know forget but i think that's rare rare uh, possible but yes. rare but the thing is is they thought of that what i'm getting at and carla is like it's a lot of us ignore that like well it'll be different mm-hmm. yeah well because, i mean yeah go ahead well, i was I gonna know. say like Good. Uh, this is like story time, right? Okay. So Investor Fuse was founded by myself and Dan Schwartz, who uh, we had never met before we found the company. Um, <laughs> we found each other online as two people that were interested in Podia for real estate investors, started doing a little work together and then decided, uh, well, he was already working on Investor Fuse and brought me in as like the tech person and the product person to kind of take it to the next level. Um, Carlos was our first, Car- God, Carlos was our first. <laughs> This backwards thing, uh, full time employee. Um, but he had worked with Dan, and I'll let you take the story from here because you guys had a little bit of maybe a friendship or, or maybe I can't some kind of. Anyways, you guys knew each other before you worked together, and it did work out. I mean, Carlos is phenomenal, and has been since he worked in Dan's real estate business and an investor for you. So, um. It's, yeah, you take the story from there, Carlos, and maybe yeah. you can kind of give some insight into how it did work and, and so on. For sure. And I'll rephrase, I want to rephrase my answer for Papa P that 99.9% of my civilian friends, I probably wouldn't work really? with just because they don't have the same mindset. Real estate friends that I know, like people that I just know, yeah. I would work with 99.9% of them that I'm actually friends and hanging out with. But the story of Dan, Dan and I, so it's actually six years ago this month, which was just a couple months after Investor Fuse launched, which is crazy. Mm-hmm. Thank six, you. A little over six, six years. years. Crazy. Um, but Dan, I did not know, but it's very interesting. I'm very big into like kind of, you know, bigger things that play in the universe and stuff like that. But Dan, I didn't, didn't know, like I wasn't friends with him, but I had mm-hmm. heard he was in a rock band with my brother-in-law. And I had oh, heard of this right. mysterious. I had heard of this mysterious guy that like flipped houses without buying them, like no money down, like kind of like a commercial I see on TV. And I was like, hmm, that sounds pretty cool. 
Uh, but pretty much, was I got a drummer in a funk I, band. Yeah, but pretty much, <laughs> I got linked up with him. Uh, my sister, actually, my last year of college, crazy, gave me these book recommendations from him before I even knew who he was. I didn't even know his name, so that's when I started re- reading Think and Grow Rich, um, like Power Positive Thinking, like all that type of stuff, and that just changed the trajectory of my life. It really did going to my last year of college. Um, but pretty much, I didn't get a pharmaceutical sales job. And then my sister's like, oh, this, this guy, he just posted on Facebook. I was on a ski lift in Pennsylvania. She showed me on Facebook on her phone. She's like, oh, the guy that like flips house or whatever is looking for like an inside like sales guy. And I was like, all right, you know what? I'll talk to him, whatever. Um, so I wasn't friends with him before, but I talked to him on the phone. He was in Costa Rica at the time. And he's like, hey, you want to do this? And it was like December, 2013. So I literally just met him at a... Uh, Panera Bread in Towson, Maryland, like Baltimore County, Maryland. Just met up with them, kind of explained me wholesaling. They're like, yeah, first assignment, put out bandit signs. Um, very first call off a of bandit sign was a brother of a guy that owned a property. We made a $9,000 assignment fee on it. Super easy to work with. I know that's not typical. Uh, but those thing. are the, the glory days of wholesaling yeah, where it was, was easy. Brook, Brook, Brooklyn, <laughs> Ninth, Ninth Street in Brooklyn Park in South Baltimore. Very first deal off my very first call. Um, but yeah, I was pretty much just like managing leads. And I was like a lead manager acquisitions hybrid for Dan, essentially for two and a half years, like end of 2013. And uh, I remember when he told me about Investor Fuse. He brought me and Mike Casey, self-storage king these days, like Investor Fuse shirts to brunch. He's like, yeah, I'm doing this. So I was gonna, I was gonna apprentice Mike and just learn how to do fix and flipping type stuff with Mike. Went on like a couple appointments with him. End up meeting some of my best friends in real estate now, the Moschel brothers, at an appointment trying to buy a wholesale deal from them. Um, and then Dan asked, he's like, "Hey, I have this like thing. He's like, you can do it part time. You just get on like video calls and like just kind of show companies how to use the CRM, like Investor Fuse." I was like, "All right, cool." And really, we just like love like. It was just a great fit. Like I, it was something like I really enjoyed doing versus like negotiating with sellers. Like I'm less maverick and more like, like uh, I don't know, not goose necessarily. I'm trying to think. You got to take that test and you'll find out what you are. Yeah, exactly. Stay that, tuned. Stay tuned for next week's episode, guys. But he wouldn't have done that. <laughs> he wouldn't have done that though if you would have been a flake, if you would have been dumb, mm-hmm. if you would have been not a hustler, if you would have been if you would have been anything else. I don't know Dan personally, but I, I'm sure. He probably wouldn't have asked you to do that, just like he wouldn't have brought John in. And that's the thing, right? Is like you get to make those informed choices based off of prior experience. Yeah. Instead of like, oh, you're here with me. Yeah. Let's partner type thing. And that's the thing, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. of the difference of it all. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I, I mean, so we've explained here that uh, having previous you know, work experience on not a partnership has helped inform a lot of our success today. But I mean, are there other ways other than that to, to figure out? Carlos is always just showing us his swag. It's not, well, I know. Well, I just, got the, new, I just yeah. got the new camera set up, so I'm actually just playing with trying to get the focus to work. Yeah. Um, soft, soft flexing right now. I got you. Bro. I know. <laughs> I got you. Um, are there other ways to to understand like the part like is this person gonna be a good partner than trying it out? I Victor, mean, I'm trying Victor Rybachuk. I'm thinking of a podcast episode on the other podcast, but Victor Rybachuk, he he and other people have said it's kind of like marriage. Like you need to date a little bit before you get before you. There you married. go. And every unless one, of these, every one unless of these you're into arranged marriages, yeah. <laughs> unless you're into yeah, arranged marriages good. or something like that, or uh. Whatever service it is where you can like order a bride, I can't remember what that's called. Um, <laughs> mail order bride. Yeah. Mail order bride. Thank you, Papa P. Um, but yeah, he said it's like the same thing. Like you want to see if like you have the same values. Like Victor Rybachuk and his partner Alex, he liked seeing that he was like very frugal. Um, didn't post like any type of flashy stuff on social media. Um, same religion. They like both go to church. Are like big into like tithing and donating and stuff like that. And yeah. So, and- Sorry, go ahead. No, you're good. I was going to say, like, it helps when you have a lot of the same values, like, yes, um, yeah. and complement each other well. Like, you and John complement each other really well. Dan Dan and John complemented each other really well as far as, like, a personality, uh, mm-hmm. you know, type structure and their, their strengths. And for me, it was always fascinating being in the middle, just seeing, like, both, both uh, 
ends there. But yeah, dating before. Dating but it's before very years. much like dating because mm-hmm. it's very much like a bad relationship. I remember I had one partner back in the day in our I didn't know it at the time, but like I did, but I didn't like, it's almost like you're dating like somebody who's just toxic for you, but you know, you deny it. So I'd have people coming up and be like, Hey man, like you're really cool and everything, but like, why are you partnered with with so-and-so? Like I'll do business with you, but like, I don't necessarily trust so-and-so. Why are you with them? I'm like, ah, man, you know, they're blah, 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 perfect. And you know, they do this for me and we got our own thing. And I'm like rationalizing it. It's like, you know, Mm -hmm. being like this, like this verbal abuse type thing. And I'm making excuses as to why that's not true. And they're like, man, you got to get out of that. And I'm like, no, no, no. And reflecting back on how that had held me back and why that didn't work out. And now I'm like 10 times more successful. And I felt like you're almost like free from that. And it's like a relationship. Yeah. man. It's like a relationship. You didn't test that out. And that, that's nothing yeah. bad against, against that. Like that happens. And, for every like in a personal male female thing for every person there is somebody you just mm-hmm. have to go find that someone same thing in partners for every person there's a business partner you just it takes a little more to find them because you have to find the right mindset the right goals the right path someone that matches or offsets what you're good at so you can split duties and roles up mm-hmm. and that i don't think enough people will talk about and i think they should man i definitely think partnership should be something that people take seriously and not just back into when I started with Raphael, I was thinking about this the other night when I, when I went to Raphael's first thing, Raphael Vargas back in like 2018, 17, whatever year it was. Was it in Washington DC or in Florida? Uh, he was in Florida at the time. So I think it was like 2018. Um, don't quote me. But anyway, there was a bunch of people that I met that all had partners. And when you met them, partnership was phenomenal. Phenomenal, mm-hmm. phenomenal, phenomenal. They were crushing the world. They were all on the same path. And I remember sitting there, I'm like, huh, they all have it all figured out. And this is after I'd broken up in my previous partnership. And here I'm thinking I'm doing something fucking wrong. You know how it is with social media. You look in, you see a perfect world, you judge yourself and you say, yeah. why, why can't I, why do they have it all worked out? Fast forward a couple of years and every single one of those partnerships has collapsed, crumbled, and now they're all individually doing something. Some of them aren't even doing real estate while the partners are just completely crumbled and crashed. As as you try to scale, you realize that somebody once told me, a wise man once said, the people that help you get to where you're at aren't meant to get you to where you need to go. And then Mm -hmm. like they crumbled apart. And I, I was watching someone on social media. I'm like, wow, I remember when, you know, I remember when I can't believe they're not doing business together. And this person's not even in real estate because in my mind, they were perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, We talk about that in the SaaS world too. Like the, the stages of business, like, you know, zero to 1 million, 1 million to 10 million, 10 million to hundred million all require a different type of person to be able to do those things. And you either have to be able to learn, new skills, learn how you have to change and then change to kind of fit those growth areas. Or, you know, there are some SaaS people out there that they're just the builders. They'll go create a great SaaS product. They'll sell it to somebody who's going to take it from 1 million to to Mm -hmm. 10 million and and whatever. And then they'll go build something else because that's just like what they're great at. And they've come to knowledge that I'm not I'm not the person that wants to scale. Like that's not my skill set, nor do I want to become that skill set. And, um, you know, I'll just hand it off to somebody else. Um, but, you I mean, know, like the, it is a relationship. Like you, you just said that person is very good at that thing. So if you go into that thinking, they're going to get you from one to a hundred million when really they just want to build and be done. You're going to have a bad relationship. You're going to, yeah. you're, it's going to be tight. It's going to hold you back. It's going to hold them back. You're going to be unhappy. So I think there's more planning that has to go into it. I remember before, like I met my wife. Like you actually have to go write down what you're looking for, right? Like mm-hmm. you write down what you're looking for, think about what you need in a partner, what your goals are, what you want their goals to be. And you know, no, no shit. Like, yeah. And then I found her, like I made strict things and she did. It was funny because she did the same. And I think that's the same thing. Cause I equate business relationships to personal relationships. I think the way you are in your personal relationship is how you'll be in business. If you're cheating, your personal, you cheat in business and vice versa. If you're yeah. overbearing, you're overbearing and so on and so on. Mm-hmm. 
and you got to make those that list of what you're looking for in a partner. And when I made my list for my database idea, right, I was like, my dream partner has, you know, and I made the list and I was like, who could be the guy here <laughs> on the wall? And I was like, John. And I gave him a call. There he is. But yeah, I'll here we, here we are. I think that would be my recommendation or advice to anybody. And mm -hmm. I was curious, so. And, you know, I think too, you got it like the whole idea, right? You got to date. So don't be afraid to try things out, but be willing to make the decision when it's not working so that oh, you're yeah. not pulling yourself into unhappiness. Like, and yeah. Yeah. Like, nope, no more. I've learned. Don't be a like, bitch. Yeah, don't this be is a, a great lesson. Bitch. Next. <laughs> well, well, think about it. You, you joke, but like, Think about how many people you know in toxic relationships like that that won't quit even though they know it's not good and you waste years of your life doing that. Like that's the same thing. You can waste years in a business partnership and you can miss the boat. See, mm -hmm. like in business, you could literally miss the boat for your product, your service or whatever it is you're selling because either someone beat you to it or it's not needed anymore because you, yep. missed, you missed the boat, proverbial mm -hmm. boat. Yeah, totally. 100%. Yeah. This is a very, well, a very Maverick Goose pairing here for the REI Ops. Very Maverick Goose. Maverick you know, Goose. I can't speak to that yet because I need to see Top Gun 2 to figure out how Maverick progresses in his career to see if I want to be tied to him as a character. Although he was cool and suave and obviously everything I am. <laughs> and he could sing too, which I cannot. But I also don't want to die. So. Oh, yeah. But so you were married to Meg Ryan. So, you know, back in, the, back in the 80s and 90s, Meg Ryan was the hit. Mm -hmm. and, oh, I forgot. that you're, I think that we were talking about that. And you sent the, I think you had sent me after how they both have aged. And the female role. Was that you, Brandon? Nope. Wow. Somebody sent me that. We were talking about, I, anytime Top Gun comes comes up in a I conversation i get well, i'm gonna google it now but someone sent like what tom cruise looks like now and then what uh call sign charlie looks like now i forget her real name but yeah not not great oh her actually yes okay i didn't i didn't send that to you but i saw that online she uh yeah. You lost that, that love and feeling. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely lost that love and feeling. But you know what? That happens. And for everyone out there, there's someone for them, you know, everyone's beautiful in their own way. Yep. That's right. Well, that's Very right. Well said. <laughs> you know, the other thing, too, about all this mm -hmm. is about success, right? Mm -hmm. Whether we're talking about predictive indexes and personality tests, partnerships or data management. It's never ending. Every one of these things matters to the success of an, or real estate investment, flipping, wholesaling, data, whatever it is, you got to have it all ironed out. It ain't easy. Yeah. It ain't easy. They don't no. tell you about that when they, when you go to entrepreneurship school and Wait, you, you went to one. <laughs> I didn't even know there was one. I was joking. I'm, <laughs> pretty sure <it> was <laughs> you, I'm sure somebody sells a course, but I honestly don't think. I'm sure there's a course out there. I mean, I went to college. Yeah. I love college. I, you know, that's a whole topic we can discuss. That's oh, all. Oh man, I'd love college. to chat college, college one day. I, I fucking love college. I don't care what anybody says. Made me who I am. Love it. Whatever. But mm -hmm. um, and I made so much money, I paid my debt off. So I, I hate when people say that. Oh, the debt. I'm like, oh, that's money. not. Stop being a fucking bitch. Make some fucking money and pay your fucking bills off, bro. Mm -hmm. So, but again, there's a debate there because I'm not doing what my degree was. I'm just saying entrepreneurial school, joking around, like no one tells you that. We were talking about people leaving culture, right? Doing it on their mm -hmm. own. Everyone sees the one side, but they don't see all the balancing act of what it is to train your sales organization, what it is to yeah. hire management what it is to hire for you guys, developers for your software, what it is to keep them, pay them, the softwares to do all that, to budget yourself, make sure you're not going to run out of money. And if you do, what are you going to do? Because that, that happens. What are you going to do? How are you going to solve problems? I'm a maverick. I'll solve all the, said it, you read it. I will solve all the problems, but not everybody. 
is able to do that. No. And that's what they don't know. And there's not one place to learn that. I mean, I didn't know rap about business finance coming into Investor Fuse, like zero. And figured it out. I don't even think I remember watching anything or learning it. It's just like, and now like give me a P and L and, and QuickBooks and balance sheet. And I'll fucking tell you what's happening with your business. Right. Um, There's one place to learn it, John. And maybe you haven't heard of it. What, School, what's of place? School of hard knocks. School of hard knocks. <laughs> School of experience. Of experience. <laughs> Learning the hard lessons and not dying while and proverbially not literally dying, but dying in business. That's it. Mm-hmm. If you're still around, and that's the thing, man. Ah. Oh. Is like I see people learning from people who have been in this business three years, four years. Bro, it's easy to still exist. Come talk to me after 10 years, 15 years. I'm not even there, 15, 20 years. Like, yeah, you learn every year. And will every time you make a mistake, because you will, mm-hmm. right? Every time bad thing happens in the economy or just inside your business, or people die, or people quit, or people leave, or the wrong person gets hired, does it take your company down? And what do you yeah. learn from that? And that's only thing you could do is through time. That's it. Mm, time, so all, yeah. these, all these people in two, three years are like, I made some money. Let me show you how I did it. Right? Mm-hmm. That's how you did it. But how did you keep it? Yeah. I mean, like, what did you say, Carlos? We're six years, six years since you got hired at Investor Views. Mm-hmm. So we're like six and a half years since founding. It was and- Fe- February... February, it was public. I mean, there was stuff going on besides mm-hmm. that. But I think November is when I started. Yeah, the but launch, I mean, like, the launch was February, yeah. So let's say six and a half years, right? Like, mm-hmm. um, I we sold in the middle of that. We made a little like chat bot. We've now sold Investor Fuse to Carrot, um, which we're all still hired there um, and and loving it. Um, but when I think of myself as like okay, here's my SaaS experience and what I'm doing and, and what I've done. I'm still like, I'm a fucking baby. Yeah. <laughs> like mm-hmm. Six and a half years just doing this. Like there is like 20 more years in the future mm-hmm. and so many more things to learn. And I mean, I've had tons of learning lessons now and I can speak to experience of, you know, building products, launching products, mistakes made within products, people, uh, like development. Yeah, the site, well, I've definitely felt some cycles. Right. Yeah, um, but I still like, like I'm not no way to am I like I'm ready to stand up on a stage and tell people how to make a SaaS business. <laughs> like maybe like, you know, there are some things I could teach or, you know, counsel people who are a year in or whatever, but you know, I have yeah, that perspective that I still have so much more to learn and to do and to grow and to experience um in my life. Like to zoom out and i'm only i'm here i got all this this to go yeah you can only speak to what your experience is you can only speak to what you know um but i was saying like with the cycles you know because i've been i haven't been through a full-on cycle i i came in during the recession in 09 2010 and been here throughout the entire upswing but like i don't know those same decisions i made in 2012 versus now are completely different not because of my experience but because the cycle was different back in the day with flipping i had problems with finding deals like not not off market deals but back then you went on the mls to get them you know because you had to buy from foreclosures or short sales or something but labor was a plenty and materials were cheap and people you would literally go find people at home depot to do a job and guys were begging to work with you how you ran your business was completely different Versus yeah. now trying to get a trade or a material. I mean, we've been waiting two weeks on an order that we need to finish a flip and there's nothing I can do about it. Mm-hmm. I gotta wait. And so my decisions on the order of how I do, like I was talking with Parker and I was telling him how I like to do things in a certain order. Well, guess what? Like if you don't have a certain product, you better switch your order if you expect to get your job done because how I used to do things doesn't mean how I can do things in this. So that's it too. You learn that. Yeah. I'm, I'm learning that now, like how I used to do things and my decisions don't match to how the environment is today. Totally. Yep. But it'll make me more well-rounded. I'm really excited for when I'm like a 60 year old fucking billionaire and all the experience that I'll have in the next 30 years inside this head to me, 
it's like a game and it's fun. Like I yeah. love it. I love mistakes. My wife doesn't Me love too. when we make mistakes, but I do. And I always have to calm her down and be like, listen. That's how we learn. Fuck up a silence. It's a lesson. It's a Get lesson. mad when you do it the second time. That's what I always tell people. Like, same thing with like asking me questions. It's like you like ask any question. I'm an open book. Like even if that that answer is somewhere else, um, that's fine because I can teach you that. Hey, that's somewhere else. You should go look over here. Ask that question a second time. <laughs> but you know what? They don't teach our kids that. Yeah, that's the thing. Is like I try to teach my my daughter and my son, my the two oldest. I got three, but try to teach them failure is okay. Now I didn't do that for my oldest daughter for the longest time. Because it, it, I wasn't educated to that as I was coming up. Like it took a while for me to understand personally that failures were great, mm -hmm. you know? So as a father, I was teaching my daughter perfection, don't make mistakes, you know? And then as I started learning it, because I can only parent to my own experience, now yeah. I'm trying to teach her that mistakes are okay. Like it's okay to fail. It's okay to try. You can't be upset with these things. But they don't teach any of that in school. They don't teach collaboration. They don't teach failure as an option. They you gotta get your passing grade or else they hold you back and you gotta conform. Well, here's a bad fine. thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, Shameless plug though. Awesome. I signed my son, not a plug for me, but a plug for my man and all of our heroes, Elon Musk. He started a school. He hired, he didn't like the school system, so he hired a teacher that he basically said, if I give you money and I say, create a school that helps independent thinking, logic, reason, problem solving, collaboration, all the things yeah, yeah. that are in today's world. Well, this guy then went off and he did it. And obviously, I don't know how to pronunciate Elon's, what is it? What's his kid's name? Alps, whatever. Oh, I have no idea. <laughs> anyway, he went off and he created like an offshoot of this school as a module for parents to teach their kids at home, at home learning. It's called Synthesis. Yeah synthesis and i oh, signed my cool. son up for it and he starts in may and it's a nice weekly meeting where they teach kids on how to fail collaborate on product and generate ideas and realize that ideas may not be good but it's okay to give your ideas in a group environment like a group think tank type thing and i'm really yeah. stoked for it i mean shit. i mean my son's the heir to the you know petterson throne here and if he can't do that mm -hmm. I mean, look at i mean if he listen if elon musk is doing it i'm doing it yeah, Love to the moon. Good rule, of thumb. Good rule of thumb. To the moon. To the moon and back. To Mars and back. He's the richest man in the world. Come on. Well, maybe not for much longer if he buys Twitter. I don't think they're gonna let him buy Twitter. He literally didn't. He just say that I've got all the funds like figured out. Yeah, it's, it's not pretty as easy interesting. As that. It's what not, can that billionaires do? They, put, they gave it. They put a poison pill in. I mean, you can't I buy it. I've been following that closely. The only way he can buy a poison pill essentially gives everyone the right, like the, their poison pill gives everyone the right to buy shares. So if they do mm. that, it's going to drive. I mean, he, it's going to make it so much more expensive. Instead of $54 a share, it's going to, who knows what it'll go up to. And again, it'll make it more expensive. He can only own up to 15%. He would have to collaborate with mm. other people in order to do it, which he could. I don't know what his plan is with Twitter, though. Twitter's only made money for like what two quarters out of its entire existence or some shit. Yeah. It'd be interesting. Do you guys do Twitter? Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Really? No, I, don't. I need to make another account just for crypto for following like crypto stuff. That's why I, I go way you, back. Use it as a news feed. Yeah, use it yeah. as a news feed. Mm -hmm. I don't have time for social media. I, I got. I literally. So I have a timer on my phone that tells me like how much time I can spend on Instagram, and it's fifteen minutes a day. That's it. That's all I get. Better man than me. Same. But I if just, I did that, if I did that, you guys wouldn't be able to get all my cool, like, whoop! You guys yeah, like, limit yeah no, I, and, and I'm having that conversation with myself, too. Uh, like, not right now, at least. Like, there's still too much to do, but I think there's something to be said about sharing content and and yeah. being good at sharing content, not just, like, for the sake of I want to share content to grow something. Just be, like, being able to verbalize your thought process, your opinions. Um, I think there's huge value in that. Um, it helps you as a leader, as a communicator. Um, so anyways, I think, you know, there's something to be said about that. Um, something about that, about how a man should be able to write 
write down his thoughts. Writing isn't getting your thoughts down, jotting them down, writing them down isn't uh, something that we push in today's society and it should be. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, this has been a great episode six. I think that's where we're at. Episode six. Thank you for those of you that have stuck on live watching us. Um, yes. Share this live show. Uh, and hey, our podcast will be up next week. Yay! Um, uh, we have finalized some marketing things. Uh, this, this thing's going to scale now. We got some comments in the, in the chat. That's good. We do. Game changer. Woohoo! Game changer. Our app center will be. I'm my, biggest, my biggest fan right there. <laughs> Richie has your last name. How'd that work? <laughs> oh, oh, shit. Oh. <laughs> All good. Still counts. Right. Still counts. Absolutely Still counts. does. Fan God, is a guys. fan. Today is an excellent day to make some money. Let's get out there. Let's do it. Let's do it. All right, guys. Have a great okay. weekend. See you Woo! next week. Same time, same place. Peace, guys.